And let me now turn my attention to a good news story that I am particularly delighted about. The tiger population in India now stands at 3,167. Remember, the figure was down to just 1,411 in 2006. And that was a time when many people definitely thought that the tiger was in risk of extinction. Now, you would say that 3167 is not that big a number. And it is true. This is still way lower than what it was at the time of independence. But it's not just a big deal. It's actually a huge success story. And it's a success not just of India, but of the entire world. Let me just put some numbers in front of you to try and bring things into perspective. Tigers once roamed across Asia. Their number was as high as one lakh at the start of the 20th century. Although they've been hunted for nearly a thousand years, their numbers really began falling very, very steeply as human population, as agricultural expansion, as deforestation, and as infrastructure fragmented tiger habitats. Only 5,000 to 7,500 were left in the wild as the 20th century drew to a close. Now, India is believed to have had a tiger population of around 40,000 at the time of independence. But over subsequent decades, this declined. And it hit a record low of 1,411 in 2006. And at that time, the Panna and the Sariska Tiger Reserves lost all of their native tigers. Poaching, at this time, unregulated poaching had accelerated the decline in tiger numbers. And there was a real fear of extinction of the tiger. This, by the way, was despite a long period where India had been trying to protect the tiger ever since Project Tiger was launched. Uh, in 1972, India officially banned tiger hunting. The next year, in 1973, India launched Project Tiger, a one-of-its-kind conservation program to save the big cats from going extinct. Initially, the project covered nine tiger reserves spread around 18,200 square kilometers. But since then, it has become the largest species conservation initiative in the world. Under this project, 27 tiger reserves have by now been established over an area of something like 37,700 square kilometers. At present, India is now home to as many as 53 tiger reserves, covering 75,000 square kilometers. Authorities have relocated and paid entire villages to make space for the tiger. They have created wildlife corridors to link their fragmented habitats. Project Tiger generates more than 45 lakh man days of employment for local people annually. But as I was saying, by 2006, despite all the efforts or that had been taken under Project Tiger, there was a real concern that the tiger was going to go extinct. Since 2006, though, it has been a different story and a very positive story. And specifically, it's been an Indian success story because unfortunately, in other parts of the world, the tigers haven't really started to rebound, not quite in the manner that has started to happen under in, in India. And because of the crisis in 2006 and that 1411 number and the fact that the tigers were, had gone extinct in places like Panda and Sariska, there was a nationwide awareness campaign. There was an entire Save the Tiger campaign that started to roll. A lot of awareness was created and people started to worry about the tiger. And that did lead to change. That change is reflected in actual hard numbers. Look at the census. The census initiated under Project Tiger was the first time that real numbers of tiger populations had started to emerge. The comprehensive survey is conducted every four years and is based on information collected by wildlife officials across 380,000 square kilometers of land. It also draws on data collected from camera traps in known tiger habitats. The census has revealed that the tiger population has been steadily climbing from 1,411 in 2006 to 1,706 in 2010, signs of stabilization there. Then 2,226 in 2014, 2,967 in 2018, and now 3,167 in 2022. Now, it's an increase of 200 tigers in the last four years, but also a sign of some plateauing. It's only about a 4 to 6% growth rate right now in the last four years compared to a sharper growth rate earlier. It could be because tiger habitats have started to get crowded. The latest tiger census covered, uh, covered forested habitats in 20 states of the country. 
A foot survey of some 641,000 kilometers was done looking for carnivore signs in prey abundance. Camera traps were set up at 32,588 locations. They generated 47 million photographs, of which 97,000 were of tigers, they noted. Clearly, the conservation efforts have paid off, and India has every reason to be proud of that. At least for the moment, it seems that the tiger is safe from extinction. But, and this is an important but, some concerns still remain. India is now home to 70% of the world's wild tiger population, which stands at about 4,500. But those numbers are on only 25% of the total tiger habitat. What does that mean? India's tiger numbers are actually very high compared to the rest of the world. But the tiger habitat is small compared to the rest of the world. The rest of the world needs to get their tiger number up, and India needs to get the tiger habitat up. Not only the core zones, but even the buffer zones are now seeing an explosion in the tiger population. More and more tigers are coming into the buffer zones. That means there is a chance of human-animal conflict because tigers are solitary and territorial creatures. They roam, they go from one place to the other. As their population increases and as the basic core tiger reserves become overcrowded, the tigers will try and find other places to go. And that means they could come into conflict with humans. Also, you will have other issues. The worsening climate crisis spells trouble for all vulnerable habitats, and that is still a problem. Illegal poaching still continues, although it is down from what it was in that 2006 to 2008 period, and it, 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 does, it still does exist, and it is not something that can be ruled out completely.